G'day everyone, Tim from vMix here and today we're looking at the recording functions within vMix. Recording is an important part of every live video production. It gives you the ability to create high quality video files that can be used in many different ways. You can immediately distribute the file to your clients and subscribers, upload to your favorite online video platform, edit and use for future video projects, and importantly, it gives you a backup of your production for archiving and future use. Many people just use vMix for the recording functionality. They'll use it to create live-to-tape recordings of things like tutorials, talk shows, events, lectures, conferences, and we've even had TV shows recorded with vMix. It means that you have a finished product without the need for future editing. Now this video will go over how to record your production and also how to use the secondary recorder in vMix if you have 4K or Pro. vMix offers other recording options such as ISO recording each of your individual cameras and a multi-channel instant replay. You can check out the description for a link to those tutorials. Before we get started, it's important to remember that when recording, you'll need to have plenty of disk space on your computer and that you're preferably using an SSD. Once you've finished watching this tutorial, it would be a good idea to do a lot of testing to make sure that you're using the best recording settings for your production and the equipment that you have. All right, so now we're going to jump over to the vMix desktop. Now I already have a basic production set up here and what I need to do now is to configure my recording settings. So in order to do that, I just need to click on the little gear icon down the bottom. Now I'm using vMix 23, so things might look a little bit different if you're using an older version, a newer version, or if you have certain Windows applications or third-party video codecs installed. However, it should look very similar to this. The setup window shows you the different file formats that you can use on the left-hand side, and then each of the configuration settings are on the right. Now let's start from the top, we've got AVI. So this will provide you with a high quality recording, but it requires a fair bit of CPU resources and disk space. With AVI, you can also adjust the codec from this option here from the codec menu, and you'll see any sort of third party codecs that you might have installed on your computer. Now the FFmpeg option can also be used to create high quality recordings using codecs such as ProRes and VC3, but keep in mind that these are very, very resource intensive. Now underneath that, you'll see the vMix AVI option, and this can be used for high quality, low resource recordings in vMix. Now, as it's an AVI, it will have a fairly large file size, so you will need to keep that in mind. Another thing is that the files will only be editable in Premiere Pro and Magix Vegas. For other NLEs such as Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve, you would just need to convert them before editing. But this can be easily done through the vMix Media Converter, and that's found in the hamburger menu here. So all I need to do is select my vMix AVI file, and I can convert that to a ProRes option and change the quality down here. So it's going to be a similar sort of quality. For this tutorial, we're going to use MP4. Now we have a couple of reasons for that. MP4 recordings offer good quality. They can also be directly uploaded to places such as YouTube and Facebook. And finally, they can use your graphics card for the encoding. So they're not putting any unnecessary strain on your CPU. If you're looking for the quickest and easiest way to record, go with MP4. Okay, so up the top of the MP4 setting screen, you'll see file name, which gives you the ability to choose the location of the recorded file and also give it a name. So I'm gonna browse this and I'm going to call this recording 51 because that's how many takes we've done and click save. Now underneath that, you can adjust the resolution, the frame rate, bit rate, and the profile um, for the video file that you're creating. Now the bit rate here will determine the quality of the video. However, keep in mind that the higher the quality, the larger the file size is going to be for that particular MP4 file. If you're wondering what bit rate to use, it's probably best to work out what you're going to be doing with the video. So for example, if you're going to be using it for something like YouTube, um, then you wanna check out what bitrate settings that they would recommend. So here's actually some examples of what YouTube recommends for bitrate settings for uploading videos to YouTube. However, if you plan on using the videos in other ways, you may need to increase the bitrate or if a client has given you specific uh, specifications as to what the video file needs to be, um, you may need to make some adjustments. Okay, so underneath that, you'll see profile. Now the profile will provide more quality settings for your recording. So it starts with baseline and it works its way up from there. 
Now, the higher the profile, the more it will use your GPU. And not all GPUs will support some of the higher profile options. So if you're totally unsure, I would just select H.264 main as the option here. Now, next to that, you'll see the use hardware encoder option. Now, if you have a relatively recent NVIDIA GPU, something that's going to be a GTX 950 or above, you're going to be able to take advantage of the hardware encoding option for MP4 recordings. So this allows you to do the recording processing on the graphics card instead of using the CPU, as we mentioned before. So I will include a list of all of these cards that are capable of doing the recording encodings in the description. So it'll be on the NVIDIA website that you can check that out. Now the GeForce cards from NVIDIA allow you to do two encodes. So you could use one of the encodes for the streaming and the other one for the recording. If you don't have a dedicated GPU, then you'll be using the CPU. So it's important to have a graphics card for encoding and also for other video processing in vMix. Now we can't really recommend using NVIDIA GPUs as the encoding capabilities are more powerful on these than other GPUs. Underneath that, you can select whether you want the recording to be fault tolerant or not in case of something like a power outage. Now down the bottom, you'll see some audio settings. So up the top, you'll see the audio. You can choose to select whether you want it on, which you typically will. Uh, and then you can choose what sort of audio it's going to be recording. Now, typically you'll want to be recording the master audio. So if you're recording your production and all of the audio for your whole production is going through to master, you'll want to record the master audio. I wouldn't play around with this if you're unsure. Otherwise, you'll do a full recording and not know what audio you've recorded. So then underneath that, you can select an audio delay. Uh, the audio bitrate and choose whether you want to create a new file for the recording at set intervals. And this is handy, for example, if you wanted to have a, if you had an eight hour recording, but you wanted to break it up to make it easier to edit later on. Now in the bottom left hand corner, you'll see a wave file record. So when this is on, it will also record a high quality wave file of the audio alongside the video file. So finally, up the top of the screen here, you can see that we have one, two, and a drop down menu here. So if you have vMix 4K or Pro, you have the ability to do two simultaneous recordings. So for example, on our fourth, first record, we will probably want to record the program output. So that's what we're going to recording. Output one, it's linked to our program output. That's what we want to record. But for the second recording, we can go ahead and choose anything else we want to record. So when we want to use it, we just tick the box up here that says enabled. And then we can go ahead and make changes to what sort of um, recording file that we want to use. And then from the drop down menu here, we can then select what output we want to record. So this is handy for doing things like a clean feed, like if you wanted to record your program output with no overlays, or perhaps you wanted to just record a desktop capture or a particular input, you can do that by using the output settings here. So at the moment, I've got it set up to go to output four. So then if I wanted to change the settings for that, I can go into the output settings in vMix here go down to output four and then choose what I want to use. So I could use an individual input like a desktop capture. I could record my multi-view preview or I could maybe select my output and then go into here. And then as you can see here, I've set up my output to have all my overlays off. So I could turn them all on or turn them all off if I wanted to record a clean feed. Okay, so when you've got all your settings set up, I'm just gonna click okay down the bottom here. Now comes the really tricky part, so bear with me. So in order to start the recording, uh, step one, you'll need to go down to the bottom here and click the record button. And, and that's it. So now that we've started our record, you can see that I've got a production clock set up here to tell me how long I've been recording for. I've also created an input here so I can use that in a multi view if I wanted to. A little record button will appear over the program output here. And next to it, you'll also see some recording time uh, and any drop frames if there are any. You can click the info button here to see some more information. And you can also see the recording audio levels for the recording here. So those have been added uh, since we started the recording. So again, another tough situation in order to stop the recording, what we need to do is go down to this record button here, press it again, and then confirm. And now our recording has finished. Now we don't need to just use this button here. We can set up a shortcut on a keyboard, X keys, MIDI, Stream Deck to start the recording and stop the recording. The activators also work with the recording as well. So you could have a flashing light or a notification on your device to say, hey, I'm recording. 
Now the recordings also work with the uh, trigger functions in vMix as well. So for our vMix Funtime Live show, when I press the button to start our intro video on the transition in of that video, it also starts our recording. And when I play the outro video on the end of that, it stops the recording. So I don't have to worry about whether I'm recording or not. So that's super handy. So you can use shortcuts, activators, and triggers alongside the recording. Okay, so now that we've completed our recording, we can go ahead and we can go to the folder. And as you can see here, I've got recording 51. Um, it's ready to go. And then I can drag and drop that into my VMix production if I really wanted to use that, which I probably shouldn't. But uh, that's, uh, that's my video. Uh, it's good to go. Uh, and yeah, I can start using that for future editing and whatever else I want to do with that video. When making recordings of your productions, there are a lot of different factors to consider. So you want to double check and make sure that you're using the right video files and codecs. Sometimes you might have clients that have really specific requirements as to the file format, quality and codecs that are required. So before you record your production, make sure that you fully test everything out to make sure that you, know, you do have the necessary capabilities to create those recordings. There are plenty of resources online with recommendations as to what recording types will work best for different situations. So I always recommend that if you're going to do your production, do a full run through beforehand with the streaming and the recording and the switching and everything so that you know that everything is going to work properly. Now you don't always have to use vMix for the recording as well. Quite a lot of people will use the external outputs from vMix via SDI, HDMI or NDI to record the output on an external recorder or potentially on another computer on the network. So that's something to consider if you didn't want to do all the recording just on vMix. So if you do have any questions about recording in vMix, please send us an email via the support page on vMix.com. It's very hard and if not impossible to answer technical diagnostic questions about recordings on YouTube comments. So send us through an email and our support team will be able to help you out. Okay, so now I'm going to take the recordings that I've done in vMix and then I'm going to now create a video about recording and upload those to YouTube. So thanks for watching and we'll stream you later. Thanks for watching. Click to watch another exciting vMix video or head to vMix.com for a free 60-day trial. See you later.